viewers and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's class, I will be teaching you how to make a very cool Space Invader game in MIT App Inventor. So let's begin. First of all, create a new project. Go to project, start new project. I'm going to call it Space Invaders. Okay. I will be uploading some assets in the media section and I will be giving the link in the video description. So there are some sound files and some images. Space background. A rocket ship image. An alien ship image. An explosion image when the alien ship is destroyed by a rocket ship and an explosion sound and a fire sound okay so you can get these images from the internet but i will be also giving the link in the video description first of all change the title of screen one to space invaders and make the screen orientation portrait Drag and drop a canvas from drawing an animation onto the viewer. Make its height 80% and width fill parent. Make the background image of the canvas the space background. Make sure to click on OK. Drag and drop two image sprites from drawing in an animation. One, two. Name one of them rocket. Name the second one alien ship. Set the picture property of rocket to the rocket ship PNG file that we had uploaded earlier. So picture I'm going to choose rocket ship and make sure to click on OK. So now that's a big file. You can download large images and modify them, resize them using the paint software so that it looks appropriate on your game. But I'm going to do it from the properties. So I'm going to make the height 100 pixels and the width is 80 pixels okay so this is a small game so for a small game it's okay to have large images but if you are making a game which has a lot of resources so try to resize the images before using them inside the game okay so that you do not have extra baggage in your game and the game size does not increase because of large images so resize them appropriately okay? So this is my rocket ship and similarly for my alien ship, I'm going to set the picture property to the UFO that I had uploaded earlier. Click on OK. Again, I have to resize it, make height 90 pixels and width 120 pixels. Okay. Depending on the image that you use, you will have to resize it if it does not look good and you will have to resize it accordingly. To the image that you're using. Now the next thing is that we also have to add an image sprite for the explosion. That is when the alien ship is destroyed we are going to show an explosion image in place of it. Okay so I'm just going to rename it to explosion. Okay and I'm going to set the picture to explosion.png and again I'm going to make its width and height 100 pixels don't forget to click on OK. The last thing on our canvas is a ball sprite. Okay, so this will be a basically our missile or bullet that we will be firing at the alien ship and it will be fired by the rocket ship. So just drag and drop the ball and rename it to bullet. Okay, and set its radius to 8 and the paint color to orange. Okay, we also need a clock sensor. This is for showing the alien ship after a certain period of time after it has been destroyed. So we'll be showing it after about one second. So I'm just going to drag and drop a clock. So unlike Scratch, which has a weight block, we do not have a weight block in MIT App Inventor. So we have to use the clock sensor and use its timer. Okay. So I'm going to uncheck this timer enabled and keep the timer interval to 1000, okay, which is equal to one second because this is in milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. Next we need to add 
a horizontal layout for this area. Make its width, fill parent and height 20%. So we gave 80% to the canvas and 20% to this horizontal arrangement. For the horizontal arrangement, make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center and background color is green. Let's make it a bit darker so we can go to custom and darken it a bit from here. Okay. Now we need to add a score label and then another label which will actually display the score. So there will be a word saying score and then the actual number score will be shown. So we have to go to user interface and drag one label. So this will have the text score in it. So rename it to score label make font size 20, font bold, with this 20% and the text on it says score and text alignment is center. Okay, let's put a colon after score. Okay, next label, drag again. This is our actual score which will have the number score in it. Again font bold, font size 20, width is 20%. Text on it is zero, text alignment is center. Next, we are going to add a button. This is the reset button. This will reset the score to zero. Button, rename it to reset button, font bold, font size 20, width is 35%, shape is rounded, text on it says reset, text color is green, and the button color is black, okay? Now we need two sound components for playing our explosion sound and our bullet sound. So from media, drag and drop two sounds onto the viewer, name one to explosion sound, bullet sound, okay? Set the source of the explosion sound to the explosion sound that we had uploaded earlier and the bullet sound to the laser sound okay so they have been set now the screen has been designed so let's work on the code go to the block section our rocket chip is always at the bottom of the canvas and its y position will never change it's just the x position that we will be changing if we tap on the canvas anywhere so if we tap on the canvas the x position of that point will be given to the rocket chip so let's write down some code to make sure that our rocket chip is at the bottom of the screen. So we go to a screen and get its initialize block. So when the screen is initialized, we are going to set the rocket ship dot X position to the middle of the screen and the Y position to the bottom of the screen. And from screen, I mean the canvas, okay? Set rocket dot X to the width of the canvas divide by two. The width of the canvas, we can choose width from here and get a division block from maths. And we have to divide it by two. So this becomes two. And the Y position of the rocket is towards the bottom of the canvas. So we are going to duplicate this block. Set it to canvas.height and this should be changed to y. So the rocket's y position is equal to the canvas's height. Okay. That done. Now we want to move the rocket shape anytime the user taps on the canvas to that point's x position. Okay. But we need to calculate that in terms of the rocket ship image. Okay. So when the canvas is touched, we will get an X position and a Y position. We will use this X position to calculate the new X position for the rocket ship. So we can duplicate this block. So set rocket.x to get X. But if we do just get X, we will notice that our rocket ship will move too much towards the right. And that is equivalent to half the width of the rocket ship, okay? So we have to reduce this get x by half the width of the rocket ship. So let's get the minus block from maths and plug in get x from here. And we also need the division block. And here, we need to 
put rocket dot width and we can duplicate this too okay and plug that in so that will make sure that our rocket ship visibly moves to the point where the user touched the canvas also we need to hide our explosion image as you know that it is being displayed right now but we want to hide it initially when the screen is initialized and we should only show it when the alien ship is destroyed by a bullet okay so let's go to our explosion and hide it when the screen is initialized so set visible to false okay now let's think about our bullet a bullet is basically a ball sprite and what do we want our bullet to do initially when the game is started our bullet should not show okay so we also need to hide our bullet so go to bullet and set it's visible to false too now let's look at the code when we tap on the rocket chip that is when our bullet will fire when we touch the rocket chip we want the bullet to show itself on top of the rocket chip and we want the bullet to start heading upwards and if it strikes the alien ship then the alien ship should be made invisible okay so we are going to be using the rocket dot touched block to actually fire the bullet so when the rocket is touched we are going to make the bullet visible and we are also going to set its speed of movement upwards and we are also going to set its heading that is the direction heading is a value from 0 to 360 degrees that indicates what direction the sprite should be moving towards so 90 is up so we have to change its heading to 90 so first of all i'm going to make the bullet visible so i can get this block duplicate it and make it true and i am going to also set the heading so set bullet dot heading and that is 90 and duplicate it to get the speed property and the speed is 30 this means 30 pixels per second that is the speed at which it will travel upwards okay the next thing we need to program is what happens when the bullet hits the alien ship we will use the bullet dot collided with event handler so go to bullet and get the collided with event handler this event is called whenever the bullet collides with another sprite since our rocket sprite is locked at this position that is the canvas dot height position and we are not changing it anywhere so the only sprite with which our bullet will collide with is the alien ship okay and on collision we want two things to happen first of all our score should increase by one and secondly the bullet should be made invisible okay and it will be made visible again when the rocket chip is touched to fire again so we are going to first of all hide our bullet so duplicate this block and secondly increase the score by one so this is the score so set score dot text plus block now this is the important part we want the bullet to fire from where the rocket ship is because that's where the bullet should be so let's add a move to block to our rocket ship touched code okay so that our bullet moves to where the rocket is and we also need to play a fire or laser sound when the bullet is fired so i'm going to go to bullet and call its move to block and inside here the x will be the rocket ship's x value plus half the width of the rocket chip okay we can duplicate this block because we already have it in front of us and get a plus block so the bullet will move to the rocket ship's x position plus half the width of the rocket ship okay so this will exactly make it in the middle of the rocket ship and for the y position we are going to give it a value equal to the y of the rocket ship minus a certain number so that we bring it towards the top of the rocket ship okay so duplicate so the rocket ship's y position and minus 40 so for me 40 worked okay so you will have to try out the game whether it looks nice for you and we have to play our bullet sound okay 
So go to the sound effects, bullet sound and call sound.play. Okay. Another thing to be added is that if our bullet misses the alien chip, it will go towards the top of the screen and it will get stuck there. So we will have to hide it when it reaches the edge. We need to use the bullets edge reached event handler. So go to bullet and get this event that is triggered when the bullet reaches the edge so let's take care of that and we are going to hide our bullet so we can duplicate the hide block and use it here now another thing is that we want to continue the game so at this point in time nothing is happening to the alien ship when it is touched by the bullet okay so we want to hide it too and we want to replace it by the explosion image and we also want to start our timer that the so that the alien ship is displayed after one second okay so first of all we are going to call our explosion sound so that we hear an explosion when the alien ship is struck by the bullet and we are going to change the position of our explosion image to where the alien ship is so get the move to block for explosion. This is basically a fireball and we are going to give it the position, the X, Y position of where the alien ship is. Alien ship X, duplicate, alien ship Y. Okay. So now the explosion will move to where the alien ship is and obviously we need to hide our alien ship and show our explosion. So show the explosion by making it visible and hide the alien ship by making it invisible. Okay. And the last thing in this event handler is enabling our clock. So set timer enable to true. We can duplicate this true block. Now, what about the, the timer when it goes off? So let's write some code for that event. So when the clock's timer goes off, we are going to, first of all, disable the timer. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. Disable it. And we are going to give our alien ship a random X position from zero to the width of the canvas. But we have to consider that there is the width of the, the alien ship two in the calculation. So set alien ships X two from maths, get the random integer block and make it zero here. And here we need to do some calculation. So get the minus block and get the canvases width. So I just got the height. I'm just going to choose width from here. And we have, we have to make sure that our alien ship is showing completely on the screen. So we have to consider its width too in this calculation. So alien ship dot width. Okay. This will give the alien ship a random position on the canvas. Its X position will be random now. Okay. And now we have to hide our explosion image and show the alien ship again. Okay. So how about we duplicate this from here, but make it false and duplicate the alien ship here, but make it true so that our alien ship is visible again. The last thing is our reset button. So when the reset button is clicked, we are going to set our scores text to zero. So score set text to zero. So this is done. We are done with our code. I hope you liked this class and understood it. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And do share my video with your friends and family. Thank you for watching my video. See you in the next class. Have a good day and goodbye.